Hey, third grade, welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. In our last two lessons, we have learned some fundamental skills for observational drawing. Those skills are shading and measuring. Today, we're going to continue using those skills and add a third skill to our repertoire. That third skill is going to be overlapping. What does overlapping mean? Well, you should probably know this by now, but here, let's take a look and see. Look at these two bananas. Notice how one is just on top of the other. That's not overlapping. Now look at these two bananas. Notice that one is behind the other. That's overlapping. Overlapping is what we call it whenever one thing covers something else up by being in front of or behind. It's super easy to learn how to draw with overlapping, so let's get started. So as we draw this picture of bananas, I want you to remember that our focus for today is on overlapping, where one banana is in front of the other, but we're also going to be using the shading and measuring skills that we've practiced over the last couple of weeks. So for starters, I need to figure out where on my paper I want to start. Do I want to start with the top end of the bananas? Do I want to stand, start with the bottom end of the bananas? Do I want to start with the banana that's in front or the banana that's in back? There's really no wrong answer. You can start where you want. I think I'll start with the tops of the bananas since that is in the corner here. So I can start in the corner of my paper. And what I'll do is I'll measure how far in from the edge of the paper is that line measure how far in from the edge of the paper is that line and I'll get started right here in the top corner. Now that line there doesn't go all the way to the top so I don't want it to go all the way to the top. That line comes almost straight down but not quite so almost straight down but not quite. One thing I like to do is kind of if I'm copying from a photograph like this one thing I like to do is kind of draw in the air above my picture and then make that same movement, right? Just practice that movement. How would I draw that line and then come over here and draw that line? And then notice uh, with this next banana, notice where this line almost merges. Like there's three bananas here. One, two, three. But these two, the line is very hard to see. Why is that? Why is that line hard to see between the two? Well, it's because they're both really bright. They're both really shiny. They're the same value. And if two things are the same value, you're not going to see a line between them. Here we see a line between them because there's a shadow and there's a bright spot. So the, the, like this would be like a number one value and this would be like a number four value. And those values, there's a line between them. That's where this line comes in. But my next line over is very faint. There's just a bare hint of a shadow there. So again, I need to measure how far over. I can measure from the edge of my page or I could measure from that line, figure out which way you're measuring. I'm measuring from the edge of the page and then mark it there. And then um, compared to this line, remember this line doesn't go all the way to the top of the picture, does it? So from this line, this line is a little bit lower. So from this line, come a little bit lower to start this line. And again, I can kind of draw in the air or I could measure how long is that line and which direction does it go. Uh, or I can sort of practice that line and then come over here and make that line. Now, this line I didn't finish. This line keeps going. So, but what does it do? It changes direction here, doesn't it? And so I kind of want to measure where it changes direction. So it's about that far in from the edge of the page, which is about how far in I've got it right here. And how far down is it from, from that line? It's about where I've got it. That's where it changes direction. And when it changes direction, it bumps out the other way. 
and then it curves down again. And I could try to like measure the whole banana, but my pencil's not long enough to measure the whole banana. So instead, I might make myself like a little mark. You know, you can even draw on the paper, or I could just visualize and say, like, there's a little bit of a spot here, tiny little bit of a spot. How far is it from where it starts to curve until it gets to that spot? It's about that far. So from where it starts to curve, come down that far. So now, and which direction does that go? It goes this way, it goes this way. Okay, so what, I'm, what that's telling me is I didn't bump it up enough. It needs to, it needs to bump out more and then come down with a swooshy curve, okay? And I can always go back and erase any lines that are wrong. That's why I'm using a pencil first. And um, then from there, from that little mark, how far is it to the end of the banana? It's that far to the end of the banana that far, so I'm just going to mark the end there, and uh, which direction, from that mark, from that mark, it goes that way, but notice how it curves under my line, un under my pencil there, so it goes that direction, but it's going to curve under, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep curving down, and then uh, flatten off. And then right at the end, you notice how it changes which direction it curves. Like it's curving down, and then it's curving, bumping over. And so, there we go. Wow, it's taken me a long time to draw one line, hasn't it? Um, the important thing, we're talking about overlapping, so look right here. Do you see how this line, when it hits the banana, it stops? We're not going to try to draw a whole banana on top of this banana, okay? Let's finish drawing this first banana, and then we'll talk about how the second one overlaps behind it. For this end of the banana, it's, it's got a flat-ish end that's about that tall, a flat-ish end that's about that tall, but it's not completely straight, is it? It's kind of zigzaggy. It kind of zigs to the left, then zags to the right, then zigs to the left, and then zags a longer to the right, and then that's it. So it's kind of like a sideways M. If we look at it this way, it's an M, but it's stretched on, on this part. Okay. So zig to the left, zag to the right. Zig to the left, zag and drag to the right. Okay. Um, it's not completely pointy though, so I want to kind of round those zigs and zags off a little. And at the bottom, what does it do? It doesn't just end, it changes direction and curves this way. You can always turn your paper, and like I said, you can kind of practice that curve and then put it in place or you can measure the curve is that long to the shadow I'm measuring it to the shadow to the cast shadow here it's from from there to there but also it curves under this so get it from there to there that's where it's going to meet the shadow but it's going to curve from there to there. It's not going to be straight. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Look right here. The dark side of the banana is completely black. That's a number four value. The shadow under the banana is completely black. That's a number four value. Should I draw the line between the banana and the shadow? Do you see a line? between the banana and the shadow. If you don't see it, don't draw it. There isn't a line here because it's all just black. That whole area is just completely black. 
So I'm not going to worry today about the background. These bananas are sitting on some fabric. I'm not going to worry so much about that. But I am going to try to get this shadow, the shadow of the bananas being cast on, onto what's under them. In this case, it's fabric. Um, so if the shape of that shadow, it angles down a little. And then we have this sort of bumpy line here. The reason that's a curved line is because uh, the reason it's a wavy line is because of the wavy fabric, the fabric. We'll talk about more how to draw fabric in a later video, but um, because the fabric has, you know, waviness to it, that shadow is kind of wavy. Um, we're trying to draw what we see, not make things up, so I'm not going to try to just make up a shadow of the bananas. I'm going to draw the shadow the way I, I see it. So it's a little bit of a line that comes this way, a little bit of a line that comes this way. I could measure that. I could measure that. I could make sure it's going the correct direction. And then let's measure how long this wavy shadow is. It's like that. It comes to here, but it waves in between twice. It waves up, down, up to there. Okay. Now that doesn't get me all the way to the edge of my page because this picture doesn't go all the way to the edges of the page. I could stop here. I could draw the box, the frame around the picture, or I could just carry that shadow on. Okay. Now this right here is more of that fabric. We're not, not even going to worry about that except to show that this is the, the bottom edge of that shadow. It's the end of the shadow. So where should that be? I'm going to measure it relative to the top of that banana because I've already drawn the top of that banana. As a matter of fact, this right here, it's kind of hard to see on the camera probably, but there's this tiny little smudge here, this little dark spot. That's the spot that I used to measure my sort of midway point for the banana. I'm going to measure the distance from this shadow, from the end of the shadow to that point. Boom. It's that far. Boom, it's that far. And then I'm just going to kind of mimic this shape and get the edge of the shadow. Okay. Now, I've drawn one banana. I've drawn a little bit of a line here, not much of one. Uh, I've drawn the end of the shadow. It's time to start drawing the second banana. This first banana merges into its shadow. It's time to start drawing the second banana. Okay. Um, this line here was supposed to be this line here, which does not come and touch this banana. So I need to make that go a little further over. Either that or I made this go too far out. I'm, I think I made this go too far out. So I'm going to fix that a little bit. All right, that line there is that line there. Do we see a line between those two lines? There's a line at the edge of this shadow, right? It comes from basically the same point where this line starts. And it curves down and touches there. And notice that it, all, it goes like behind the first banana. Where it goes behind the first banana, we stop drawing, okay? And then it comes back out on the other side of the banana. So we stopped drawing when we got when we bumped into the line here, and then we start drawing it again over here. Okay. Now let's work from the bottom of the banana here. If I measure from the end of the banana to where it overlaps here. It's about that far. Okay. I can measure that high up on the banana here. Just make myself a little mark. And then from there, I want to measure how long the, that, the bottom edge of that banana is. It's that long. It's that long. Make a mark for where the end of the banana is going to be. And then I want the curve of the banana between those marks. And 
And notice that when I bump into the banana, I stop. We'll call it banana number one. I keep saying the banana, the banana, the banana. Banana number one is the one in front. Banana number two is the one I'm drawing right now. When banana number two goes behind banana number one, we just stop. We stop there. The rest of the banana goes back behind where you can't see it. If you can't see it, don't draw it. Okay? Now, if we look closely, there is a second line that comes from kind of the middle of this curve and comes just above, just barely above. So from kind of the middle of this curve, from kind of the middle of this curve, I want a, a second line that comes just barely above that first line, right? That's like the different sections of the banana peel, okay? Then we've got the end of the banana, which is about that long at that direction, that long at that direction. And it's kind of bumpy, just like the end of the first banana was. It's a little bit more smooth, but it's, it's still a little bumpy. It's not as zigzaggy. Yeah. Okay. Something kind of like that. Did I, have the, did I make that go the right direction? Let's look, because I don't think I did. This is the angle of the end of the banana. I don't think I made it steep enough. So let's redo that. You see the difference between those two lines? It's only a tiny little bit off, but it makes a big difference. Okay, now, so we've done our overlapping here, haven't we? This is overlapping where one banana comes behind the other. Other than that, everything we're doing here is exactly the same as what we did for our sphere, our cone, and our uh, cube from last week's lesson. It's exactly the same. We're just measuring shapes, and, uh, and then we'll be measuring shadows if we have time. We probably won't have time, but if we have time, we're going to measure the shadows too. Okay, so notice that this long curve goes all the way from banana number one, from this point at banana number one right here where we've already, I've already kind of started coming off. It goes all the way from there to the end of the banana, banana number two. All right, but notice it doesn't go quite to the top of the end. It goes more to here, not to here, right? And it's a curve. Now, what I can do is I can measure how high above banana number one does that curve go. So, like, if I take, come from this point where they overlap each other and measure up, then come from here, the point where they overlap each other, and measure up, make a mark there. Whenever you're drawing a curve, it's a good idea to have three points. Where does it start? Where does it end? And then another point in the middle that you know it's going to curve through that point. So it's going to curve from here. It's going to start here, go through this point, and end up here. Okay? That way, because if you just have the, the beginning and end points, then you might make the curve come way too far this way, or you might make it too flat. By having that third point, you really help, help yourself figure out exactly what kind of a curve to make it. All right, so that's a pretty good line for this part right here. Then there's another line right above it that's really hard to see, especially when we get up here, because it's the same values, okay? Uh, so, and, and right over here, it's the same values. So, but this is the top of banana number two. Notice that it kind of bumps up a little bit first, then it curves down and follows the curve of this line, and then it bumps up again before it meets up with this line, this line. Okay. 
So we've already got a marker for where this side starts, right at the end of the banana. And then it bumps up. I'm going to measure how high up it bumps. Right there. It's not very far. It's like just the length of the lead on my pencil. Then I'm going to measure kind of a midway point. It comes up about the same height. So it's going to basically be parallel. When is it not parallel anymore? About here, they start to taper and it starts to get closer. So it's going to be kind of parallel. Wait, wait, wait. I'm looking at the wrong two lines. It's these two lines. Not this one yet. That's banana number three. We're looking at banana number two. Okay. Okay, so it's way up here is when it starts when the curve changes direction and those two lines start to get closer together. That's like way up here, okay? All right, so curving up, then down, staying pretty much parallel to this line the whole way. Going through that mark, and then right about here is where it starts to change the direction of the curve and bump down, and then come up into uh, the top of that banana, right? Okay, uh, now we've put much more detail into banana number two than we did in banana number one. Banana number one, we just have the outline. But if we look back at banana number one, notice that there's this, this other shadow line right here, right? So let's put that in. Let's put that line in. It uh, comes from about here. And notice how it kind of wraps around. It makes a little bit of a loop. So it's going to make a little bit of a loop. And then it's pretty much parallel to the top of the banana all the way down to here. And it stays about that far. That's about here. And so parallel to the top of that banana. All the way. up to that, that little loop. But then from here, notice that it abruptly curves down. It's going to curve down and meet up with this line right here. Also notice that there's this little spot right here in this area where it's just a little darker there. And this line curves down in and then disappears. And also notice that between this shadow line and the top of that banana, there's another line here that's really just really close and parallel to the top of that banana all the way. That's just really close and parallel to the top of that banana all the way. And now this is the line we started with, but if we notice right up in the corner, there's this other line where it's like the highlighted space between those two lines. It may seem quite convoluted. It may seem difficult. Some of you might be saying, oh my gosh, how in the what, huh? I don't get it. How did you, huh? Just slow down, take your time, try it one line at a time. And if you don't want to worry about shading, if you don't have enough time to shade, don't worry about it. It's fine. 
What we're focusing on today is how things overlap, okay? We've got another banana that overlaps behind. Notice that banana number one, you see the whole banana. Now, we didn't draw this side of the banana because it's part of the shadow, but you see the whole banana because it's really close. Banana number two, you only see half of the banana because the rest goes behind, right? And it's, in, it's, it's blocked. You can't see it because it's blocked behind this line of banana number one. Banana number three, you barely see just a tiny little sliver of it. Look, look, I've measured here how high up it comes. It just, just barely above, it looks like a teeny tiny little skinny little, no, it's not a teeny tiny little skinny banana. It's just a normal sized banana behind a banana where you can't see the whole banana. Okay. And so I'm just, all I'm doing here is just measuring, um, measuring how high up that banana comes, how, how much space there is, how much of it I see, just tiny little slivers of it. And and so again, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. You can start at either end, it doesn't really matter, but the point is figuring out how far apart those lines are and where they go behind each other and you don't see them anymore and then where it comes back out and you see that curve and then how much space is there between those bananas it get that gap widens a little bit as it curves down here and then that gap closes a little bit and they get closer together again as it comes as it curves to the front here and then it angles down at the end of that banana and goes right behind banana number two. And so I've drawn three bananas. Now one tiny little detail is up here at the top. The finishing off of this shape that wraps around the tops of the three bananas. You don't see the whole shape because it kind of goes off the top of the page. Okay. And then, if you have time, shade it. You probably don't, if, but if you do, shade it. These dark, dark, dark black areas are like a number four. You're going to be pushing down and for this huge black area that's going to take a while, you're going to have to sharpen your pencil a couple of times in between or you know if you have multiple pencils that might be good or um, something like that. Uh, and then there are some areas where it's paper white. You're not going to have any shading at all in these brightest spots. And then don't forget, you also want the in-between. Like here, it's more like a number two, right? Here, it's more like a number one with the little, little bits, little lines in there that are number two. It's kind of like a number three down here in this space. It's dark, but it's not black, right? So look, if you have time, look at it and analyze where are the highlights, where are the shadows, where are the mid-tones, and make sure you use a full range of values for that shading. I'm going to shade mine real quick, not real quick, it's going to take me a while, but it's going to look quick in this video because I'm going to use a time lapse and then we'll come back and talk about that.
Ooh. That right there took a while and I've still got two whole bananas. And I need to go sharpen my pencil. And to be honest, I didn't even push that hard. I, didn't, I mean, it's really not that dark right here. It's, it should be a lot darker, but you know what? Sometimes in the interest of saving a little bit of time, you have to cut some corners. So, time to start shading the other bananas. Okay, so in the end, this banana, because of this huge dark shadow, took a long, long time. But these other two bananas didn't really take that long, see? Um, yeah, because especially that top one is like no shading at all, because it's just white. It's just paper white. That's all it is. So um, I could go back in and try to get the fabric and everything, but really... The point here is look at where things overlap. Notice how this shadow, like where these overlap, it casts a shadow onto that. And where these two overlap, there's a little bit of a shadow, but not as much because the light is shining more directly right there. Um, but also notice that where banana number two goes behind banana number one, it just stops. Right? Anytime you have things that overlap, anytime you have something going behind something else, it just stops when it reaches its destiny. You know, when it, go when, it, when it hides behind something, you just draw until you get to it, and then you stop. Okay? Now, if it came out the other side, then we would need to make sure those lines line up, but in this case, it didn't come out the other side. It just stopped. So, anyway, I'm, I'm, I keep looking and seeing things I could do to make it even better, but... Ultimately, I'm happy with how this turned out. It's clearly three bananas, one of them with a really dark shadow. Um, if I really, really, really cared, I could make up my own outline for where this side of the banana would be. I mean, I, I, it, I really don't have that information in this picture, but I could make it up and kind of put it in where I think it should be. Um, and like darken that line even darker for where that banana, you know, the edge of that banana should be. But really, ultimately, that's totally unnecessary because from the picture that we were looking at, you can't see the difference between the banana and the shadow. So um, that line is completely not necessary. Anyway, that's it for today. So far in our series on observational drawing, drawing from life, we've talked about shading, 
measuring and overlapping. In next week's lesson, we're going to be focusing on texture. How to draw what something feels like. I can't wait to see you then.